just before we go in into our uh, study this uh, morning, I just want again, once again, to ask the Holy Spirit that is the teacher. He is the teacher. I want us to ask him for a hearing heart, an understanding, a a seeing eyes, a hearing ears, an understanding heart this morning. And we ask him, he's the one that reveals, that guides us into all truths. Ask him to guide you into the truths. And more than anything, it's not a mental exercise. Um, It's um, God wants to give us an encounter and an experience. And uh, God wants to um, pass to us and then for what lies ahead of us and what God wants to achieve in our life. Let's just make that prayer. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we trust you with our life this morning. Dear Holy Spirit of God, we depend upon you, the teacher. Lord, we are not coming to God just to increase the volume of knowledge. Yes, we have come to an encounter. We have come to God's travel experience. Lord, yes, Lord, 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 yes, Lord. Lord, Lord, that you will come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open our understanding to this fundamental matter that you want to discuss for such a time as this. We bless you, give us the hearing ears, understanding hearts. Give us, O God, the same eyes to the praise and glory of the Father. We take authority against the evil one that want to stand against us, that want to hinder us, that want to veil your word or twist your word. We stand against the ministry of the twisting serpents. We overcome you by the blood of Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, have your way. Let there be clarity of thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I want to um, thank you for this uh, um, section. Um, Astro Light um, briefed me on what he has done so far and the area he wanted to look at this morning. You've been dealing on the matter of uh, uh, us touching a recent agent of a revival on the um, uh, concept of the issue of prayer. And this morning he has asked me to deal on the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith. Um, so this morning, i uh, like us to quickly um, go into the scriptures in the book of uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to uh, 8, and then going to look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. We are looking at the, the prayer of faith. Um, if uh, just before we get to that, uh, Luke 18, when Paul was writing to the people of Ephesus, and actually um, yesterday I was sharing in the platform of uh, the Global Prayer and Prayer on uh, what happened yesterday afternoon, uh, around 12 noon, when we finished um, praying into the gates. You know, the Lord spoke uh, specifically to me concerning what is going on, especially how Christians are dying and uh, like, I mean, in the way that it's not um, his will and his concern over what is going on, how the, the battle is claiming the life of so many Christians which is not exactly the way he wants things to be done. And he said to me, the reason is because he said, my people have not listened to the command to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind, putting on the whole armor of God. If you look at that Ephesians, number 16 of it spoke about, he said, taking the shield of faith, say, with which, uh, by which you, uh, you shall be able to quench all the flaming arrow of the enemy. Now, when he, and he mentioned uh, many pieces of armor, but when it comes to this matter, I say above all, taking the shield of faith, with it you shall be able to quench all the flaming arrow of the evil one. Before he now say praying all kinds of prayer and supplication, you know, um, by the spirit. And now, in other words, every of the pieces of God's armor you know, only works by faith. And then 
all those amounts that the Lord recommended in Ephesians chapter six from verse 10 to 18. And uh, uh, all of them were, were armor to prepare us for the battle of prayer, for the battle of prayer, for the battle of prayer. Now, above all the, uh, the, 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 all the rest of the armor God has mentioned, he said, you must take the shield of faith before you pray. And that's why we are talking about uh, uh, the prayer of faith. So we want to critically look into study to see what the prayer of faith is all about. Because we are, the, the, the topic is not zeroing in just on faith, but it's talking about the prayer of faith. But I have to give this as a background that every of God's armor for the battle that we are in and the battle that lies ahead of us. The victory lies you know, in our taking the shield of faith that even prayers is not effective without faith. Even prayer is not effective without faith. I'm stressing on this because um, there are so many people that have learned the act of praying, but they do not uh, really have so much results. It's not about the volume of prayer, but God is interested in some elements in, your, in our prayer. And that element that is so key when it comes to the issue of prayer is the prayer of faith. When the prayer is lacking faith, is a waste of both spiritual energy and a waste of our time, a waste of the, uh, the time of heaven, because it's not going to do much, it's not going to pleasing to God, neither is he going to be able to do anything to the enemy, because what gives you victory? The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, he said, whatever is born of God overcometh the world. This is a victory that overcome the world, even our faith. So even our faith. So uh, faith is always the vital, you know, active ingredients in whatever thing that we are doing to both get the attention of God or the, and to be able to deal with the enemy. And so this morning, like we said, our, we zero in into what the prayer of faith is all about. And by the grace of God, we want to be as uh, concrete as possible to be able for us to understand uh, and to examine our prayers, to examine our prayers, to see if our prayers has been the prayer of faith. I tell you, um, the result you get in life is tied to how much your prayer, you know, is um, is meet this condition of being the prayer of faith. So I'd like us to go to that Luke chapter 18, now from verse number one. Now uh, it says, as he spake a parable unto them from verse one to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint, you see? And we say the time we are in is a critical time is a time that prayer is inevitable. No one can be an agent of revival if you are not a, a, a person of prayer, if you are not strong in the place of prayer, especially uh, a personal functional, having a functional prayer life, personal, personal functional prayer life. And then we now talk about the collective one. And uh, um, it's also interesting to know that uh, uh, a praying is a praying with all kinds of prayer and supplication. Must be a person who understand how to pray all kinds of prayer, all kinds of prayer, not just one form of prayer, not just a prayer of petition, uh, not just a prayer you know of uh, asking and receiving, but uh, who also understand the prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of worship, which God has ordained to deal with the enemy. Not just that, but also a prayer of consecration, a prayer of consecration, a prayer of inquiry. You know, as important as that is, uh, which we say we need so uh, badly in this end time because. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man reveals the pre tremendous uh, power. And then we said, power, what do you need power for? Uh, Psalm 66, verse 3, 
Say, say to God, how terrible are thou in thy works through the greatness of your power, shall your enemies submit yourself unto, uh, uh, submit themselves unto you. So the enemies submit unto us through prayers, through uh, 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 power, and we generate power through prayer. But I'm saying to you, the amount of power you are able to generate is a tie to the, this ingredient of being able to ensure that your prayer is a prayer of faith. So where we already said, and it's speak a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, first of all, if there is nothing that will make you faint, the Lord will not, uh, that way, if there is nothing to make you faint, the Lord will not add that clause there. Then what our interest is, and then he now begin to give them a parable said there was a judge in a certain city, he said, who was a godless uh, man with great contempt for everyone. Uh, the, the, the widow of that city came to him repeatedly, um, verse number three, and there was a, a widow, um, uh, King James, uh, a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. I want you to note that. And then, and he would not for a, a while, but afterwards, he said, on, on, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man. Verse uh, number uh, five. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. King James said, yes, because this woman troubled me, I will avenge her, at least by her continual coming. She, uh, she weary me. And then verse number eight, then the Lord said, listen, learn a lesson from this uh, evil judge. Verse seven, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry a day and night unto him, do he be along with them. Verse number eight, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man cometh to answer the prayers, when the Son of Man cometh to intervene because they are persistent in calling upon God day and night, when the Son of God come to, uh, uh, you know, to answer them because continuously they have been there and praying, but then he will look for an ingredient. He says, shall he find faith? Shall he find faith? When he comes to look at, listen to the prayer, when it comes to intervene, whether the prayer is a personal on a personal issue, whether it's a prayer you are praying for other people, whether the prayer is a prayer concerning your family, whether the prayer is concerning the city or, or concerning you know the, the, the souls of men or concerning what is going on in our world, the ingredient is uh, that God looks for remain the same. The Bible says, shall he find faith? Shall he find faith? Now, uh, the question is now, uh, what is it about the prayer of faith? What is the characteristics of a prayer of faith? How do I know if my prayer is a prayer of faith or prayer of doubt? Because we'll see obviously that what moves God is not the continuous prayers. As we can see, even in the book of Matthew chapter nine, I want us to establish all these things so that we understand because it's very critical. It's very critical that in such a time that we are in, we do not have time to waste spiritual energy. And it is so heartbroken in the, uh, before the Lord that many, there are many people that look like they're very mighty prayer warriors, but they have very little result in their life and situation. And it can be so frustrating. In fact, people usually mock and say, you pray too much. Yet there's no evidence of the prayer. I mean, that it can be so, you know, disheartening and discouraging. And that's why God wants us to look to see what is the missing link. What is it that is missing in our prayer? Because it's very important. Prayer is explosive. Is a, is a, a one of the, I mean, the greatest weapon the universe has ever known. The issue of prayer is greater than any weapon of the world. But the beloved, when they said this ingredient of faith is lacking in it, then it can be, I mean, it be totally, totally, you know, uh, useless when it comes to the issues of life to deal with the enemy and to get the attention of God. Now, in Matthew chapter 9, verse number 7, I just want to draw our attention that the number of cry we cry is not going to move God except he's able to 
determine the position of our faith in the place of prayer. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. If you find it, you quickly read for me, um, 9, 27 of Matthew, uh, Matthew 9, 20. 9, yes. And when Jesus departed, when Jesus departed, then two blind men followed him. Two blind men followed him, yes. Crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Now, pause before you continue. I want you to see the level of prayer. Because remember, you know, one definition of prayer is talking to God. You know, these people were not just talking. They are not modern, they are not like modern Christians that are talking to God. Because in this day, we can be talking to God and we will be pressing our phone. We can be talking to God and uh, you know, doing uh, other things, chatting with other people. We can be talking to God and chewing gum and doing other things. These people were so committed in they are talking to Jesus that they were even crying. They were crying. So I want to uh, establish that. Before someone will be talking to God and crying, you must know that the whole person's being is there your spirit, soul, and body, because you cannot cry, you know, when you are talking to God, when your heart is not there. It's not possible. You can't, before you pray a prayer of Christ, it's not a prayer of sleeping. It's not a prayer of that, you know, you are listening to your English. Before somebody cries in prayer, check it all the, in any time you are crying in prayer, you must know that it's not a prayer you can easily fall asleep. So I'm just trying to show you that even prayers that are coming from the heart, even prayer that involves our crying is not enough to move God. The tears in our prayer is not what really move God. As much as the tears are important, because a broken and a contrite heart, God does not despise. But even when our prayer, because there are elements of uh, our cry that is not really because of a broken heart on a positive direction, but it can be a prayer of self-pity. So prayer can motivate you to really cry. You can cry to say, I mean, a prayer of, uh, you know, being offended at God, a prayer of uh, looking at God as though as God, a prayer of complaint, a prayer that you are talking from bitterness to, as, to, to the point that it looks like God is unfair. You know, we have all prayed that kind of prayer and we're there. I believe you're understanding what I'm saying. But I'm saying that even in the depth of the uh, pray, crying of people, it does not really move God until he's able to determine where our, our faith is and with respect to that prayer. Now look at verse number 20. They went right into the house with uh, Jesus because Jesus left them and carried on with the journey. The Bible says Jesus, uh, they continue to follow Jesus and they were crying after Jesus. And you know, they, uh, where, where he was staying and Jesus asked them a question. Do you see verse number 28? He asked them a question, do you believe I can make you see. Do you believe that what you are asking me, you know, that I'm able to do it? King James said, and when he was coming to the house, the blind people came unto him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe you, believe ye that I am able to do this. I am able to do this. So we see, you know, Jesus wants to determine the place of their faith for what they are looking for. Now, because already. If you remember, if you look at other translation, you see where he already asked them, what do you want me to do? And they were able to be specific. So one of the things that is about the prayer of faith is a prayer that is specific. But then he asked them a question, do you believe I'm able to do this? They say unto him, yes, Lord. Yes, I believe. And then he taught them. He taught their eyes and said, because your faith, and because of your faith, it will happen. King James said, then taught he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. According to your faith. So it's not according to the volume of the prayer, but it's according to your faith. According to your faith. Now we are going to see, where, uh, uh, because everyone who really prays, we pray, you know, carrying a consciousness that we are praying in faith. That's why we want to get down to be able to look into the, the nitty gritty of this prayer of faith. But we've been able to establish that the prayer of faith is not a prayer of faith because you are crying. The prayer of faith is not a prayer of faith because it's love. The prayer of faith is not a prayer of faith, you know, because 
you know, of the how persistence you have prayed it or how your voice has been high. No, that's not what makes a prayer of faith. We are going to go back right now to that Luke chapter 18 to see what a prayer of faith, the sample of a prayer of faith, because Jesus Christ, it was the one that was teaching his, you know, his disciple on this matter of prayer and brought out these active ingredients, you know, concerning the issue of the prayer that the Lord, that we move the Lord, that even though that prayer is persistent, even though that prayer, you know, uh, is a day and night, you know, without breaking, it's not, they are not, uh, even though God required that the prayer will not be a casual, will not be casual seekers, but there's something Jesus was bringing across because he said, if this unrighteous judge could respond to this woman, how much more will your heavenly father, you know, respond to his own people that are crying to him who have met the condition of perseverance, persistence, shameless uh, persistence in the place of prayer, how much more will the Lord respond to their situation? But he said, nevertheless, when the son of man come, shall he find faith. Now this woman, the prayer of this woman, this widow, is a prayer of faith. Now look at uh, what the, uh, Jesus uh, brought to our attention in verse uh, number uh, three. I want to look at verse number three of that, Luke 18. A woman of that, uh, in that city came, you know, came repeatedly. And uh, there was a widow in that city. There was a widow. The Bible was conscious to recognize that she is a widow. And then, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Now I want you to look at what the, this woman said. Now from, from the prayer she prayed, we could deduce that there's something wrong. We could deduce that this woman, you know, and, and the, as, uh, is in, in the natural, especially in the continent like in uh, uh, Africa, you know how much that certain uh, 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 tribe and certain uh, places we do suffer a lot. The moment a woman loses her husband, because many of the many times, uh, the, 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 these people, uh, husbands do not write even a will. Even when they do write a will, still some families, the, 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 the uncles and the, um, the, the uh, aunties and the siblings of the man might rise up and then try to dispossess the woman of the properties and the inheritance of the husband from her. It is usually a common challenge that we do go through. They go through all kinds of harassment, you know, intimidation, victimization. And so it is on that backdrop that we want to understand, you know, what this woman was going through. Now you would have expected when this woman get to the judge, you know the way she would have started. She would have started by pointing the judge to her situation, to say to the judge, you know, she might start even to begin to cry and, uh, and begin to narrate how that she lost her husband, how that there is a lot of problem, where, how there are a lot of challenges facing her and the other person, the other person has taken the land, the other person. This woman did not focus on the problem. No, she focused on the answer. So a, a prayer of faith is a prayer that is, you know, focusing on what we want to see, not what is going on. And so when many times when you look into our prayers, you discover that our prayers are full of, you know, narrating to the Lord the problem. The Lord already know what the problem is. He already know what you are going through. So when we come before the Lord, our prayer should be a prayer of asking the, the, the Lord what we want to see what we want from him, not what the problem is. You know, that uh, the, the narrating the problem is simply, you know, praying the problem is not prayer. It doesn't matter how many hours you spend praying the problem, telling the Lord, you know how much this sickness has been in my body and what the other person has done because of this sickness, what the other person has done because of this. Thing. So those prayer are not prayer of faith. They are simply complain, and such complaint do not move God. They are, you know, drawing the attention of God to become, you know, for uh, to express self pity. It's not the prayer of faith, but the prayer of faith is a prayer that is focused on the answer, not on the problem, uh, uh, not on the question. The prayer of faith focuses on what you want to. What is it the woman wanted? He said, "Avenge me of my adversary." avenge me of my adversary. That's what she wants. 
she did not come to tell the judge that she's a widow. It's inconsequential. The judge may have known because he's in that same in the same area. He may have heard that this woman's this them, and he did not uh, come to say, "Look, I mean, um, and start telling stories of uh, her situation and how everything has degenerated." She told the judge, "I want you to avenge me of my adversary," and so we are saying that. Many times it's important to begin to analyze our prayer. Are we praying the problem or we are praying the answer? What we want to see, what we want to see. That's one characteristic of a prayer of faith. A prayer of faith is a prayer that, you know, pray what you want to see. Number two, a prayer of faith is the one that recognizes, you know, the God's ability, God's ability, God's power. Just like the, 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 the man, the blind man, in Matthew chapter eight, when he came, he came to, no, sorry, the leper, the leper, uh, when he came to Jesus, he said to the Lord, uh, 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 if you will, you can make me clean. The leper's uh, problem was he's not sure if Jesus was willing, but he could, he saw the ability in Jesus to say, if you will, you can, you can make me clean. I know you have the power. You are able to remove this situation. I believe so much in your power but I'm not sure if your, it's your will. And Jesus eternally, you know, uh, you know, revealed the will of God. It's always the will of God to, for you to be healed. Jesus said, I will be healed. I will be healed. So it's important for us to establish that. So a prayer of faith is not a prayer that we put if, uh, you know, if, if, because God have revealed his will his will, when you are praying, for example, when you're talking about the issue of a prayer of faith, of receiving any form of miracle, they say healing, the, uh, healing, deliverance, being delivered from demonic uh, powers, uh, the healing of anything that Jesus Christ has secured on the cross of Calvary, you know, no matter what it is, whether it is healing, physical healing, deliverance and all that, he already have done that. He have, so you don't need to find out whether it is the will of God for you to be healed. The leper was not sure. Remember at that dispensation, at that point in time, you know the condition of a leper and how they are ostracized. But this leper had faith in Jesus to say, I know you can make me well. All that I'm not sure is your will. Are you willing to do so? Jesus said, I am willing. And we are saying with that, Jesus forever opened the door to say, it is always God's will for you to be healed. And so when you are praying a prayer and you want to pray a prayer of faith concerning your healing, you cannot start by saying, Lord, if it's your will, heal me. Number one, once you say if, now you have introduced the element of doubt and the gem said, just know that such kind of prayer will not be, you know, receive the attention of God. Remember in gem chapter number one, he said, uh, you know, uh, he was talking about, he said, uh, don't be, he said, rejoice when you are tempted, uh, you know, uh, you are surrounded with so many trials, but in the midst of the trial, what's important is that if any man uh, uh, lack wisdom, verse five, let him ask of the Lord that give to all men freely, but let him ask in faith, not doubt him, you know, but because a double-minded is unstable, let that man not think he will be able to receive anything from the Lord. So uh, he's uh, establishing uh, that this truth and stressing it again, that when we ask any, uh, you know, uh, matters which you ask in faith. And we are saying, uh, when you are asking in faith, you don't say, Lord, if you, if you want, if you will, like this prayer of the leper. After the leper prayed it and Jesus corrected him, when you come to the Lord, for example, in the area of your healing, and you said, if it's your will, heal me. Number one, that if you introduce is a problem. Then number two is a prayer of doubt because you cannot be talking about Heal me because you have already been healed. You have already been healed. According to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse uh, 6, he said, with his stripes, we are healed. So every prayer of healing that uh, start by saying that we, you add the article will, Lord, I believe you will heal me. That's not true. Um, and, and, and to begin with, faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is not in the future. And you know, uh, sometimes I get worried you know, after uh, spending like one hour in a place of prayer, you ask somebody to summarize the prayer and the person will rise up to summarize the prayer and cancel the prayer because he has introduced the element of hope in the prayer instead of faith. 
You don't say, Lord, I believe that you will answer this prayer. When you say, I believe you, faith is not in the future. Faith is now. Say now, faith is a substance of things so for Now, now. So every prayer of faith is, is expresses itself in the now. It's not a prayer that is in the future. And so a prayer of faith is a prayer in the now. Now, I want to buttress that by going to the book of John chapter 11, because Jesus, again, showed us what a prayer of faith will look like. When we are looking for, a, we want to pray a prayer of faith quickly, in John chapter 11, uh, um, John chapter 11 is a popular chapter, you know, concerning what happened between Jesus and Lazarus and the, uh, Jesus and the family of Lazarus, the family he loved so much. And uh, we saw, uh, you know, the drama that we open up what we are trying to say. We are studying on the principles of these things. And I tell you the truth, if we can understand it, you will discover that God answer prayer more than 110% in answer our prayers. Now look at uh, uh, this, um, let's look at this. Um, if you uh, remember, yes, from this, um, okay. This now from verse 30. From this, look at the where he met Martha. Uh, verse, um, verse 32. When Martha arrived and saw Jesus, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not uh, have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw other people wailing, he was moved. Okay, this is Mary. Let's go to Martha first quickly. The, the Mary before Martha. Um, yes. Um, Martha, look at uh, what uh, the, the moment he met uh, Mary. The moment he met Mary, uh, verse number, verse, verse 22. But even now, okay, that's Martha talking from uh, verse 21. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that, that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told that your brother will rise again. Look at Martha's response. Yes, Martha said, when everyone else is rising on the resurrection day. You see? And can I tell you that this discussion kept Jesus stand still? Remember the discussion from the verse one? Jesus was moving to go and raise Lazarus. That was the agenda for that day. But this discussion, the doubt, the expression of the doubt in the voice of Martha made Jesus stood there. Jesus could no longer move to the grave. He couldn't move there. Then what happened? Jesus, uh, 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 Jesus stood there. He took Matt Mary to come, you know, to where Jesus was and introduced something that Martha was lacking worship worship and that was what activated the journey again now look at verse uh, 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 so uh, 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 Martha said <coughs> sorry Martha said my uh, my brother will rise again but on the resurrection day is in the future then Jesus said I am and you see he didn't say I will be say I am the resurrection and the life those who believe in me though they die like everyone else, uh, everyone will live again. King James said, I am, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall rise again. Jesus was trying to say to Martha, be a matter. I do not operate in the future. I pray in the now. Uh, 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 I am. God is I am, not I was, not I will be. I am. Yet he is the he was and he is and will be, yet he operates in the now. I am, I am the resurrection. What was he trying to say? I'm able to bring the future here. I'm able to bring yesterday to come. I am, I am, matter. I operate, I'm a God of faith. I operate in the now. And then, he, uh, like I said, the, the, the verse 26, the, uh, verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this, Martha said, I believe. Nevertheless, Jesus stood there and never moved. Now let's look at what happened when Jesus arrived on the scene. Look at how the, the way Jesus prayed the prayer when he came to where Lazarus was. 
when he was confronted with that situation and he needed that miracle of resurrection of Lazarus. Look at how Jesus addressed his prayer. And then look at verse, uh, um, that's verse number, let's look at verse uh, number, verse number 39, verse number 40. Okay. Okay, let's go further to verse 41. Look at how Jesus started. Then they took away, uh, away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his, um, his, uh, up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou he hearest me. You hear me. You have heard me. This is the beginning of his prayer. This is the beginning. He was right there in the midst of uh, the problem. He started by thanking the Lord. He said, I thank you because I know you have already had me concerning this matter. That's a prayer of faith. A prayer of faith starts with, you know, in recognizing that the thing is done and coming with a thanksgiving. In other words, if I am sick in the body, what do I do? Uh, for example, number one, I have to, I believe that Jesus Christ already paid the price on the cross of Calvary. He was wounded for my transgression. The punishment of my peace was upon him. And with his strife, I'm healed. And so I start by thanking him because I am healed. He himself, you took my infirmity and you carried my sickness. The punishment of my peace was upon you. So I thank you because I am healed. You, why? Because you paid the price on the cross of Calvary. And so when I come from that angle, what is the next thing that I'm going to do? I know that the symptoms and the sickness in my body is not the Lord that has put it there. Therefore, I address the enemy. And that's bring us you know, to the next thing that we're going to see, you know, to command, to give a command. But Jesus started by saying, I thank you because you do what you hear me all the time. We are talking about the prayer of faith. I thank you because you hear me all the time. And then he now said, you always hear me, but I say this out loud for the sake of all the people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. After he has said that, he gave a command. He gave a command and said, Lazarus, come forth. After giving thanks, for example, concerning your healing, like I said, every prayer of that has to do with any form of healing, whether it's physical healing, spiritual healing, any form of healing, that you start by saying, Lord, I know you will. You already canceled that prayer. Any a, a prayer that is put you know, the, 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 in, in such a way, you know, that you are praying as though the Lord has not done it, is not a prayer of faith. But a prayer of faith, when it comes to the issue of healing, is a prayer that starts with a thanking God because it's already done. You are coming from that angle that it is done. And so when you know you have already received it, then, then what do you do? You give thanks. Then what else do you do? You have to give a command. You command the sickness in your body to live. You command because it's a mountain, you command the mountain to move. You command your body to receive healing. That's a prayer of faith. The prayer that like Jesus did, when he has finished doing that, he gave a command. He gave a command and said, you know, Lazarus and came forth. And then we saw that they, 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 it, that was exactly what happened. Now, if you remember also when Jesus had to pray, when he was confronted with a lack of resources, you remember? Because when there was lack of resources to feed the 5,000 people, you know what he did when the disciples were panicking and said, we don't have what it takes. So how can you say we have to feed these people? Jesus said to, to them, what do you have? He said, we don't have anything. It's only five loaves that this you know, young man brought for his lunch. He said, don't worry, bring it. And he said, make the people sit down in, in, in 150s. And they did. They are like wondering what did this man is you know, up to. He said, even if we all go to work, one year wage will not be enough to give them a bite. Jesus said, make them sit down. And Jesus took that limited look, that limited resources. And what did he do? You know, if it was us, we could have started by, you know, telling the Lord, what is this thing is nothing. You know, you are the one, you know, we complain and we talk and talk. But Jesus, when he took it, what did he do? He gave thanks to the Lord and thanking him for the divine provision. Thank you for this small one, this one, this what you provided that is going to be able to feed. When he gave thanks, you know, that was a prayer of faith. And then he gave a command the thing to be broken and the multiplication comes. So we are talking about the issue of the prayer of faith. 
the prayer of faith. Now let's quickly go to uh, um, in that Mark chapter 11 to be able to uh, in, throw more light into this matter. And I'm trusting that the Lord is helping us to understand, you know, the element of faith and how we nullify hours and hours of prayer by the way we conclude it, by the way we pray, or by the way we speak after the prayer is done. We many times have nullified our effort and the whole thing, action and the, I mean, it's like we cancel the prayer that we have made the through, you know, introducing the element that is not faith there. Now let's go to that Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter number 11, Mark chapter number 11, um, Mark 11. Now Mark 11, I want to read from this number, uh, this number 21, Mark 11 from this number 21. Okay, okay, from verse 22, rather. But you the you the background you know is about the fig tree and how Jesus caused the fig tree and the wither. Then verse 22, the, then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. And then uh verse uh, uh, not that word there is also translated, have God's own kind of faith. Verse 23, I, I assured you that you can say to this mountain, may God lift you up and throw you into the sea and you, your command will be obeyed. All that is required is that you really believe that and, and do not doubt in your heart, um, not doubt in your heart. Doubting in your heart and doubting in your head are not the same. Let me recall in James Version, he said, for verily I say to you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which thou, uh, which uh, he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Listen to me, and uh, that's verse number 24. Therefore I say to you, what in so ever you desire, what things soever you desire. Now, there must be, you must be specific, you must know what you desire, and that desire must be an obsession. That desire must be a, a desire that is, a, you know, not just a casual desire. That desire must be a, such a desire that uh, the way to uh, uh, explain the desire is that you must be, you know, uh, thirst. You must be, uh, it must be a hunger a desire that cannot be quenched, a desire, you know, that we, that pushes you to pray. And then he said, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, believe, when you pray, believe that you receive it, you receive it, then you shall have it. When you pray, it's a prayer that, you know, the Bible said, when you pray, you must believe that you receive it, then you have it. Let me use an illustration of what we mean. For example, if you are praying for healing, we're using again healing as a, an illustration. For example, you are having a headache, you are having a migraine headache, and then you stand in God's word. You, you desire to experience healing because healing has been given. You desire to experience healing, and then you pray according to the word of God, or somebody pray for you according to God's word, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. The Bible says the prayer of faith is what we raise the sick. And we are talking about what is this prayer of faith? A prayer that is made, you know, based on what Jesus already has done, based on the fact that Jesus already took your infirmity and carried your sickness, that he took already this headache, he carried this sickness, and for that reason, I thank you. A prayer that is concentrating to say, for that reason, you headache, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out. And then we are saying, you, when you pray, believe. How do you believe? You have to confess and say, Lord, thank you because I believe I receive, I receive uh, uh, my healing from this headache. I receive my healing from this headache. And the Bible said, if you do, you have what you say. Now, what do you say? It's not only what you say when you are praying this prayer. After you pray the prayer, assuming you are a woman and your husband say, so honey, so how are you feeling in the morning? You don't say, look, the headache is still there. I'm still feeling the headache, the fever is still there. And then you don't say, you, you remain on bed and cover your blanket. That's not a prayer of faith. 
although you have prayed it with your mouth, but the word believe is a verb. It is an action word. It requires what you say. You have to declare that I believe I receive this healing for my, for my head. I receive healing for my stomach. If it's a stomach problem, I receive healing, you know, for my child's, uh, you know, uh, temperature. It has come down. I believe she is healed. And then you continue to declare it. When, when you declare it as long as the symptom persists, we will need the faith to release the faith through your mouth, you know, as long as the symptom persists. But the truth is that that's not what we normally do. What we normally do is that we tend to wait to believe when the symptoms are gone. When your husband is asking you, so how do you feel? You say, I'm still having the headache. You are still having the headache. Why do you not believe that you are here? Because you are waiting for the symptoms to go. But when the symptom is gone, you don't need faith anymore at that point. What you need at that point is knowledge. You need to know that the symptom is gone. And as long as you, uh, you refuse to believe and show God that you believe, you know, uh, by the way you speak, the symptoms will not go. You are waiting for the symptoms to go before you believe. But God is waiting for you to declare that you are healed and uh, in spite of the symptom before the symptom can disappear. And so he said, whatever you pray, when, uh, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, then you will have it. Then you will have it. So the prayer of faith, you know, uh, it shows the faith. And how do you show the faith? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, they believe and so they speak. We too, we believe and so we speak. Verse 18 said, our speech is not based on the things we see, not on the things we feel. For the things we see and feel are temporal, but the things we don't see, which is the, the symptom disappearing you are looking for, which God promised you are eternal. And so you must say it with your mouth and then you act it with your with, uh, in action because faith without works, confession without uh, the action is dead. If you believe you are healed of that sickness, then you have to do what you could not do when the sickness is there. You have to do what you should have done if the sickness is not there. That's the way to show your faith. Now, uh, 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 please, you tell me when my time is up for the question. Is it time for questions now? Are we together? I was on mute, sorry. No, Are I was we on there? Mute. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm hearing you. Yeah, yes. no, I, I, I think... Um, yeah, it's five o'clock now. Yes, I'm waiting for you to round up. Are you there now? Yeah. Now, yes. Okay, okay. so okay. we're trying to let me round up by saying, remember, we are talking about the prayer of faith. And we uh, let me round up by showing you uh, just one or two uh, prayer that is not of faith. Now, look at Psalm 22, for example, and Psalm 77, then you see a prayer that is, uh, a, you know, a, that kind of prayer does not, uh, you know, move God. Uh, and so you must shift. Now look at verse number one, say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's a prayer. Why do you remain so distant? Why do you ignore my cries? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer me. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. This is not a prayer of faith. Now, if you look at David had to change the tone in verse number three and then to get God's intervention. He said, yet you are holy. Oh, that that inhabited the praise of Israel. Our ancestor, he now changed the tone. He now changed, shifted. Now, this is a prayer. You see, if, if somebody may spend hours praying this prayer. And when we see you, we say this person is, uh, you know, praying. You may even add fasting to it. But the prayer is not a prayer of faith. It's a prayer of complaint. It does not move God. And now uh, uh, Psalm 77, Psalm 77, and then uh, we quickly give you a chance to uh, ask questions that will bring about, you know, uh, buttress what we are saying, and then we are going to pray so that our prayer must be shifted to become a prayer of faith for such a mm -hmm. time. Uh, verse number one, is say, I cry out to God without holding back. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I sat for the Lord all night. I pray with my hand lifted towards heaven, pleading, 
there, uh, there can be no joy for me until he acts. I think of God and I mourn, overwhelmed with longing for his help. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think of good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joy. Song I sat for and um, I sat my soul and think about the difference and uh, has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again show mercy? This is a man praying. Is he unfailing love gone forever? Have these promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be kind? Has he slammed his door on the, on the mercy? And I said, this is my faith. <laughs> Can you see? That the blessing of the, the blessing of the most I have changed to be a uh, hatred. You see, this is a, this is my faith. This is where I am. In other words, God has ceased to be merciful. He has ceased to be kind. He has slammed the door. He has rejected me forever. You know, this is a prayer, but this is not the prayer of faith. But uh, if you live from verse 11, he turned the, this, he turned the complaint to begin to activate faith. And I recall all you have done, oh Lord, I remember your wonderful day of long. The same thing, if you look at uh, Psalm 42, you see where David started with crying out and he said, I'm too discouraged. And then he started speaking to his soul. And he said, when I'm in this state, how to activate faith is that I begin to remember all the goodness of God. I begin to remember all the prayer you have, uh, you, uh, all the things you have done for me from Mount Hermon, from the highest things you have done to the least thing you have done. And when he started speaking that, that way, faith is you know, activated. And then the power of God is activated. So he know how to switch. It is, it is natural. When situations are overwhelming, the enemy wants to move us into complaining prayer instead of prayer of faith. And by so doing, it drains us. It discourages us and brings us to that place where you become overwhelmed, where you go, where you just kneel down and you're sobbing and crying. And this cry is not a cry of faith but a cry of self-pity, a cry of God, you know, being unfair, God being unjust uh, to you and all those things. But that kind of prayer only sap energy and they increase their problem and they open the door for the spirit of depression. But when we go into the realm of thanksgiving to remember his goodness, what he has done of old, begin to uh, proclaim his power, begin to sing of his majesty, begin to tell him who he is and what he has done in the time of old, faith will be ignited. And any prayer you make at that time, with from that angle, uh, it activates and brings you into the very mercies of God. I want to pause Amen. to give you a chance to ask me some of the questions.